Here is now. And welcome to the SVK Crypto Podcast. 15 minutes of crypto failure. My name's Charles Story. I will be your host for the next 15 minutes. We're coming live from San Francisco. So let's get down to business. Today is Monday, the 29th of January, 2018. And before I get into what I'm doing in San Francisco and the agenda of the week, let's go through the levels real quick. So Bitcoin's currently trading at $11,339, down 4% in the last 24 hours. The current market cap for crypto space is $571 billion, and Bitcoin's dominance of that is 33.4%. We saw a high in the last 24 hours of $11,855, going down to the current price of $11,339. Ethereum's currently trading at $1,191, that's down 3.5% in the last 24 hours. We saw a high on Ethereum of $1,255, going down to a low of $1,179 and then it's slowly coming back up to $1,191. Ripple is currently trading for the Ripple holders out there $1 at $1.34, and that's up 2% in the last 24 hours. Interesting 24 hours for Ripple. We saw a high of $1.43, going down to a low of $1, $1.30, and then slowly going back up to the current level of $1.34. Cardano. Cardano is currently at $0.62. Cents. That's down 6% in the last 24 hours. Um, it's had an interesting 24 hours, Kind of looking at the chart wise so we saw a high of 67 cents we saw a low of 60 61 cents and it went went up slightly to 62 so we're still at the kind of low levels and if you if for anyone that hasn't been watching cardano super interesting project it's known as the ethereum killer killer quote unquote and um they had a high before christmas of just over a dollar so it after the after the market slipped away slightly, we saw Cardano down at a kind of forty eight to fifty one cent price range, which which was an interesting price. But um, the market cap for Cardano is sixteen point one billion dollars. So it's got a huge market cap behind it, and I feel this needs more more attention put on it because you've got to believe in the project and have conviction in the project if you're going to have a position in Cardano because it's not a it's not something you're going for the short term. This is something that you have to believe in um, they've got a fantastic team behind them at svk crypto we hold a we hold a position in cardano because we believe in the project and what they can do for the space so if you don't know check them out 100 percent neo is currently trading at 160 dollars up eight percent the last 24 hours neo has had a great 24 hours we started at a price of 148 dollars going up to the current price of 160 with that in mind let's get on to the next part of the show crypto news flash Crypto news stories from around the world. Ripple vets raising money for crypto hedge fund. Interesting story. Here's to bring up the speed of the crypto fund, or the, the Ripple fund that's been announced, and it's got quite a lot of notoriety behind it. Everyone talks about it, so if you don't know, this story is going to bring you up to speed. Two former employees of distributed ledger startup Ripple are raising money for a new cryptocurrency hedge fund, Public Records Show. Twin filings to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC) dated January 25th and 26th show that co-founders Tim Leco and Ellie Lang are seeking funds to back fractal investments, which invest in crypto assets, per its official website. The company, Fractal Investments, dates back to last summer and has maintained a public profile primarily for its Twitter account. Lang is form, formerly creative director for Ripple, having begun working for the San Francisco-based startup in 2012. Lacau worked for Ripple from December 2013 until June last year, most recently serving as integration engineering manager, according to his LinkedIn account. The filings details two vehicles, Fractal Virtual Currency Investments Fund LP and Fractal Private Investments Fund LP both of which are incorporated in Delaware. Neither filings indicated how much money is being raised for either entity. The developments perhaps highlights the continued drive to establish hedge funds and other financial ent entities amidst a period of heightened activity in cryptocurrency markets and the development around the tech more broadly, like others, for actually looking to invest in the growing ecosystem of decentralized digitized assets. And even as traditional investors move into the space, others are pushing even further. As reported last week, 
A group of former Wall Street vets has, raved, has raised as much as $50 million to create a fund of funds focused on cryptocurrencies. Great story. Let's get on to the next one. Bitcoin price looking heavy as news turns negative. Interesting story. Let's jump in. Bitcoin's possible upside appears capped by a recent run of negative news. Following a hack against the ex exchange CoinCheck last week, Coindesk Bitcoin Price Index BPI turned lower than $11,942 Sunday night, ultimately hitting a low of $11,110 at 0959 UTC Monday. Still, what may be more noticeable is not the recent price which continues its sideways 2018 trajectory, but the changing narrative for potential buyers. Though the coin check news did not impact Bitcoin directly, no Bitcoin was stolen, it does appear to have marked a change in a mainstream news narrative that has breathlessly provided tailwind for the market since late last year. For example, the 6.9% drop from the high of $11,492 may be due to concerns regarding the solvency of a startup called Teva, which provides a proxy cryptocurrency used by exchanges in lure of the US dollar. While bloggers have long accused Teva of creating the asset out of thin air, News reports are now speculating doomsday scenarios following a Coindesk report that suggests the startup has broken ties with an auditor acquired to calm market fears. In the press, experts have been quoted as saying that Bitcoin price could crash 80% if it turns out Tether is fraudulent. And though the scenario doesn't appear likely, coupled with chart analysis, it does perhaps increase the odds of a break below $10,000. As of writing, Bitcoin is currently trading at $11,064 on Coinbase's GDAX exchange. The cryptocurrency has depreciated by 1% in the last 24 hours, says data sources on China FX. So, the view. So, a breakout below the rising trend line, which opened doors for $10,000 and possibly extend the drop to $9,000. As discussed in the previous update, Dips below the $10,000 mark are to be viewed with caution. On the other side, only a move above $11,690 could yield, yield a sustained rally to $13,000. Let me know your thoughts. Interesting story. Let's get on to the next one. Ethereum is quietly closing in on record price highs. Interesting story. Let's get into it. Ethereum's Ether token could revisit record highs very soon, courtesy of last week's bullish price action. The price chart suggests the cryptocurrency which has notably given a higher rating than Bitcoin and Ripple's XRP last week by Florida-based Vice Ratings is up 18% week on week, says data source on chain FX. As of writing, Ether ETH is changing hands at $1,211, having bottoms out at $905 last week. The price of Ether rose to a 12-day high of $1,224 on Coinbase's GDAX exchange, a rebound that left a higher low bullish setup on the price chart. Furthermore, previous day's 12% rise UTC was backed by a 78% jump in trading volumes, shows CoinMarketCap. A high volume rally indicates strong hands are at play. Notably, prices on South Korean exchanges and well, are basically again being used in the calculation of global average by CoinMarketCap, having been removed in early January with no announcement and causing a drop in global prices. Thus, Ether might have received a slight boost, with prices in South Korea still carrying a premium of approximately $70 over those of Western exchanges. However, the Korean price premiums have dropped sharply from the heady height seen as the turn of the year. So, the price rise appears to be more or less legitimate. Looking at the charts, Ether witnessed a bull reversal yesterday and could soon revisit highs of over $1,400, which would be record highs. Great story. With that in mind, let's get on to the next part of the show. Top Twitter tweet of the day. The top Twitter tweet today goes to Andres Antonopoulos, and you can go follow him, follow him at a-A-N-T-O-N-O-P on Twitter. And here is the tweet. The internet enabled the free flow of information, terrifying those who wanted to control communication. Bitcoin enables the free flow of value, terrifying those who want to control your money. Great tweet. We, we uh, at SVK Crypto, were a big fan of 
Andres Antonopoulos and what he does for the space, being as vocal as he is, we think it's great. And um, go follow him to stay up to date with all things Bitcoin. The second tweet goes to Bitcoin News, and you can go follow them at BTCTN. And here's the tweet. US government scientists say, technically, Bitcoin is a fork and Bitcoin Cash is the original blockchain. Interesting tweet. Go follow them both to stay on top of the crypto game and keep listening to our podcast, 15 Minutes of Crypto Fame. Let's get on to the next part of the show. SVK's current global crypto view. Okay, so here's the situation. I'm in San Francisco and I'm going to be attending the Neo DevCon. The Neo DevCon is from the 30th to the 31st and it's being held at a hotel called the Intercontinental. I'm super excited. But today, I'm available in San Francisco. I've got a meet up later on in the evening. But if anyone's in the, the Bay Area and would like to meet up for a beer, coffee, would like to talk about a nice you're looking to do, or just like to hook up with the SVK Crypto crew from London, please feel free to reach out. My email is cstory, C-S-T-O-R-R-Y, at svkcrypto.com. Or feel free to tweet us, at svk underscore crypto. We'd love to hear from you guys, and um, it'll be great to connect with, with the community out here. So here's what I'm looking forward to the most at the Neo DevCon. And I thought that I would kind of bring it to your attention. For anyone that doesn't know, the DevCon is a really interesting two-day event that's going to be centered around the Neo blockchain. But it's not just about the Neo blockchain. It's about other companies who are, who are using and, and incorporating this wonderful technology into their businesses and trying to develop on what already exists. So here's a few of the speakers that I feel are most interesting and I'm going to bring to your attention. So to kick things off, we have... Um, who have we got first? So Scott Hunter. So he's a partner director of, of program management.net. Um, Scott joined, he, uh, by the way, program management.net is part of Microsoft. So Scott joined Microsoft 2007, working on the ASP.net team, which builds Microsoft's web framework and tooling. His team was part of the push to make .net open source and cross platform. Today he works on the whole .net platform, including ASP, so ASP.net, .net core, and dot .dot .net framework and web and dot .net tooling. <laughs> we actually have Da Hong Fei, who's the founder of Neo and OnChain. Um, so a bit a bit about him. He's uh, a bachelor of arts graduate, capable of uh, coding viruses with assembly languages. Da Hong Fei is a blockchain advisor to a handful of banks, brokers, and clearing houses. He has been or has keen insights on the underpinning technologies, various application scenarios, and the industry structure. Dang, da Hong Fei came across Bitcoin in 2011 and worked full time in the industry to, since 2013. In 2014, he founded NEO, a blockchain to register, transfer, and exchange digital assets, and led the startup to become the benchmark in the Chinese blockchain community it is today. Zhang Husheng, who's a professor of Stanford University, um, really well known in the space. Um, he's going to be speaking. He's a professor of physics at Stanford University, and he's going to be speaking about some of the some of the issues we have, and also going to be speaking about how we can solve that with the use of quantum spin hall effects, spintronics, quantum hall effects, and high temperature superconductivity. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting. We've got Dan Bonnet, who's a professor at Stanford University. Dr. Bonnet is a professor of computer science at Stanford University, where he heads the Applied Cryptography Group and co-directs the Computer Science Lab. Um, he's, he is an author. I believe he's been over 150 application, um, publications sorry, in the field and is a recipient of the 2014 ACM Prize and 2013 Goodall Prize the RSA Awards in Mathematics, and six Best Paper Awards in 2016, Dr. Bonnet was elected to the National Academy of Engineering. So but they're bringing an all-star team of them. And we have Fabio, who's the founder of COS, the city of COS, which of, um, the city of Zion, sorry, which is called COS, um, which are basically the group who who support all these new projects coming for the ne coming into the neo blockchain. So Feb Fabio holds um, a master's in com computational mechanics and various multi scaling models, and is a researcher engineer in the oil and gas industry. Or was he has uh, developed software in several large projects that have had deployment impact on billions of dollars worth of assets. He is also the open source originator 
and was one of the first developers for the City of Zion community, which brought together the founders of Nex. Um, before Fabio co-founded and acted as CTO of Laminard Learning Analytics Startup in Brazil. So some of the projects that I'm looking forward to the most, to kind of kick things off because we've got a fantastic lineup. We're going to be hearing from the city of Zion. We're going to hear it from Nex. Nex is a platform for complex decentralized cryptographic trade and payment service creation. Nex combines the Neo blockchain with an off-chain matching engine to enable much faster and more complex trades than existing decentralized exchanges. Um, Ontology, they're going to be down there. Ontology is a public platform that supports business of all types to develop their own applications using its public blockchain infrastructure and networking of other blockchains to create a decentralized trust ecosystem. Zekilla are going to be there. Zekilla are super, super exciting. Um, they finished their ICO. They're a South Korean company. They finished their ICO a couple of months ago. But what they're doing is creating a new public blockchain platform for high throughput applications. It basically brings the theory of sharding to practice with its novel protocol and increases transaction rates as its network expands. So they're looking to do 200 times higher transactions than the current Neo blockchain at present, which would be huge for the space. Loopring are going to be down. They're going to be representing. Loopring is another decentralized um, exchange, and they're looking to go live with their protocol on Neo in 2018, later this year. Trinity, Trinity are a fantastic company. They had their ICO the last couple of weeks. They did extremely well with a $30 million hard cap being filled in, I believe it was less than 10 seconds. <laughs> so um, Trinity is an applicable to blockchain transfer for the NEP5 standard tokens as a Neo version of Lightning Network. Trinity achieves real-time payment, low transaction fees, scalability and privacy protection of Neo mainnet assets through state channels technology. BlueZell is going to be there. BlueZell is a decentralized database service to solve the world's data storage and management problems. We actually had Pavel Baines, the CEO, on our podcast a couple of weeks back. So it's going to be interesting to um, to meet Pavel once again. And hopefully we might have him on the show again to see, see if there's any updates from the BlueZell team. We're also going to have... Um, we're going to have... Uh, let's, let's try and work through. So we're going to have Neo News today, which is kind of the Neo's publication to let everyone know what they're currently up to. And they're a really good website that has great news on it called neonewstoday.com. We're going to have the main guy over there speaking. I believe they've got kind of a social reach of 110,000 followers on Twitter. Um, so they're, they're super interesting. Red Pulse, which was the first ICO on the Neo blockchain, are going to be there. And if anyone doesn't know, Red Pulse is a market intelligence platform covering China's economy and capital markets. The firm basically uses machine learning and natural language processing to automate and scale basic data collection while incorporating cryptocurrency to create an open and transparent sharing economy for research. Ultimately, um, Red Pulse aims to solve the problem that we all face today, information overload. <laughs> Zpin, Zpin are going to be representing the house. Um, Zpin is basically a platform that provides support for innovators at, from putting forward an idea to fully operating project, including project crowdfunding team, team formation, copyright protection, IP transactions, etc., etc. In addition, the Zpin team behind the development of Zpin platform have accumulated rich industrial experience and resources, and the foundation will work with Team 365 to enable over 1.2 million designers worldwide to provide creative services for their customers. So I'm going to be at the event. I'm going to be asking lots of questions to all of the all of the all of the the guys in the in the neo blockchain space. I'm going to be doing lots of live interviews. We're really going to be producing a lot of content from here. And if anyone has any questions or wants to ask the guys at the neo the neo foundation or the neo team or any of the ICOs I've read out, please feel free to reach out to us. In fact, you can Telegram message us. So our Telegram message is, well, the name for our group is SVK Crowd. And if you go into Telegram, it's very simple to do. Once you click on the, once you click on the app, and if you type in at the top, SVK Crowd, you'll find us there. If you tap and then you press join group, you will see all of us. We've got the SVK Crypto crew answering all your questions on there so please feel free to join the group and if you want me to ask any particular questions to any particular speakers feel free to let us know 
All right, that's a wrap. I got to bounce. Have a fantastic day, and uh, remember to reach out to us. If you got any questions, or you wanna you wanna meet the team in San Francisco? My email is cstory c s t o double r y at s v k crypto dot com, and our Twitter is at s v k underscore crypto, and our Telegram is s v k crowd one word. You know what to do. Have a great day, and we'll be back tomorrow. Listening to an SVK Crypto Podcast Original. Follow us on Twitter at SVK underscore crypto. Email us on CSTory at SVKCrypto.com. Leave us a message on our website, www.SVKCrypto.com.